surely tutors and course leaders need to have a better understanding of the opportunities because we're one of dozens of production companies in the Newcastle and Gateshead area alone. Should we get the show on the road then, literally? Yeah. Have I got to introduce to camera? Hello and welcome. I can't remember. If, I generally can't remember if we've done that in the I previous ones. We haven't. We haven't. But I think um, if you're listening to the podcast, it's just us rambling on. We never like introduce yeah, ourselves. That's, that's Do it in all the, that's like, the, the charm, proper podcast, don't they? They say, like, "Hi, I'm Mark. I'm head of production at your film, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Matthew, <laughs> one of the other people at your film." Yeah. Did I get the company name right? <laughs> yeah, was, yeah. Did you get your name right? <laughs> Should we do that then? Should we actually introduce ourselves for the first time? Oh, that was it. Was that it? was it. Yeah. Oh, well, it's up to you then. Do I introduce myself? Who are, who are you? you? Uh, my name's Callum and I work for your film. You <laughs> certainly do. Thanks for being the third member of our tripod this episode. Thanks for having me. <laughs> We're um, going to talk to you about your experience trying to get a job in the industry and then your experience so far working in the industry. And um, although it is a standalone thing, it is obviously link back to a previous episode we did, which was about you know, roots into the industry, whether or not having a degree was particularly important. So um, you obviously joined us in September, a little over three months ago. Um, it's been, well, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but I think it's been quite an interesting first three months for you in terms of the various things you've got to work on. So I um, thought we'd talk to you a little bit about your experience so far. And um, before we get into that, let's start with, my understanding is that you did a degree but you didn't do a degree at uni, you did a degree at college. Mm-hmm. So just, just talk a little bit about what your background was, how you got to the point before you met us. Uh, so originally I started like doing creative stuff in sixth form. Um, it was a course called, just, it was literally just media production. So it touched on a couple of things, but nothing in depth. And then I went to college. At first college was just like something to fill time in. I didn't think it was going to be something that I'd end up doing because you could do the foundation degree for two years and then the full degree for all three. I didn't really want to do the full three. Um, The first year was awful. It was just kind of like touched over very basic things. Tutors came and went. It was very like unorganized. And then um, the second year was a little bit better. Um, And then the only reason I did the third year to get the full degree is because I didn't really have anything else to do, which sounds quite bad, but I just didn't really, I don't know. I just thought, well, I've got this far now. I'm already in this much debt. I might as well just... Bash on. Was one of those years a COVID year then? Was that the last year? Well, half of the year. half of the second year was a COVID <coughs> year, and then the last year was like in and out of COVID lockdowns up yeah. and down. And then I was only in one day a week, and the other day was online, which was just obviously it's not really like college because you're only online for like two hours. Yeah. So, yeah. so when you left after three years, what did you, what did you feel like you had? Um, I felt like I had a pretty decent portfolio in terms of like some of the projects that I've done compared to other people that had been and gone on the course I think that I tried to do three documentaries which had um, a bit of a difference in range when it came to like the topics that they were based on so one was based on just someone that used to dress up as Spider-Man and beatbox around Newcastle and then the other one was based on like uh, shoe reselling culture and all that sort of stuff and then the last one was obviously about a group of Satanists which was obviously push the boat out a bit far with that Did one. Did you just say the last one was obviously about group of Well, Spider-Man, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Because, you know, we've got to push Once it you've out done beatbox and Spider-Man and shoe reseller, obviously. The only <laughs> obviously the next step yeah. is to go straight into something like that. Um, yeah, I think that I had obviously a good grade. I'm not sure what that's really worth though when it comes to like creative stuff, whether you come out with a 2-1 or whatever. Or what, did you, what did you come out with? I came out with first. The first? Yeah. Yeah. But have you not read his LinkedIn profile? Yeah, but I wanted, <laughs> wanted, to, wanted to say that. <laughs> well, when I, I think that when I first started on the course, I started the third year, we were actually told by um, our tutor, he was just kind of like the actual degree itself, like the piece of paper isn't the really important part. It was kind of like try hard to make a good piece of content that shows that you've actually tried to do something mm-hmm. that's like good. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Go back to before that, though. You said you started making stuff at 16. Mm-hmm. Why? Why and what? Oh, to, well, 
to be honest, we could go even back even further. Even when I was like 12, just making like YouTube videos and stuff like that because it was fun. Doing it with the friends, the typical way in which like a lot of people nowadays get into like creative stuff. I think, um, you know, YouTube, capture card, games, just stuff like that. Just like is that, is that what it was? Are you playing games and stuff? That's how them? that's how I started making like content. Mm -hmm. I mean, the quality was questionable, but it always is at 12. Um, and then I think that in school, my secondary school, we were like deprived of all that sort of stuff. We didn't have any creative courses. So that was the only way to do anything creative. Uh, and I'm from like a bit of a background of artists really in the family. So it's kind of something that I always was interested in, um, like music, art, all that sort of stuff. Like my sister's in fashion, so it's kind of like running through. Um, but yeah, and then I'm trying to think what I did with that. At sixth form, we did like a, a couple short films just like, you know, they were really bad. As in you and your friends that I did it as part of sixth form studies? It's part of sixth form studies. Oh, right, so yeah. did that as part of media production. Um, yeah, they weren't great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they are generally, are they? I think, did you and Kev do one at school? Was that the... Well, me and Kev were uh, rivals, apparently. That's what, that's what it was sort of told, because... The, the way it was set up, there was basically two groups, and to begin with, we're in different groups. And then when we started A levels, we're in the same group. And we, I remember having a conversation quite early on about like, all oh, right, so you're you're Kevin, are you? And they, uh, I I don't think it was it was just what it was, Mark, was that we were the two best ones. That's what it was. But um, no, we, um, we didn't work together on anything at GCSE. It was when we started on A level. But even that, I think it was just the second year because I think the first year we did. Um, <clears throat> trailers and there was there was definitely at least one project that Kev did that I wasn't involved with I'm pretty sure that was uh, year level was that the one that won an award no nothing won an award <laughs> <laughs> no the, the second year was the bigger thing because the Blair Witch project had come out that was the do one. you have any idea what the Blair Witch project is Colin? I do know what the very book. good so the, at the time that was out and Dawson's Creek was a massively popular show do you know what Dawson's Creek is I don't well, the setup of Dawson's Creek was that Dawson, the main character, was meant to be, wanted to be Spielberg, basically. So he was always trying to make films and stuff. Not that I actually spent much time in the program with him doing that, but on paper, that's what his character was. So we started writing this parody called Newman's Creek, and the the plot line of it was going to be <laughs> that the character was made the Blair Witch parody, and then we're like, this is too complicated. We'll just do the Blair Witch parody. So we did that, and it was it, it didn't sound to be anything different. It was just going to be and because most people were supposed to do like a five minute film. Yeah. And then it was just that there was, <laughs> there was so much of it to parody, and it was just fun to make. So we like, realized, oh, I've got like, this half hour thing. But because we'd filmed it around the school, including things like walking through the yard wearing a, a latex mask to look like an old woman and all this kind of thing, like word had got around. <clears throat> so and it took a month to do it. Mm -hmm. So by the time it got finished, people were saying, oh, like, can we see it? Yeah. So then we put on screenings of it, but they wouldn't let uh, sell tickets, which. To this day, still wrangles, particularly as it really <laughs> tried to stamp out our entrepreneurial spirit. But as you know, it hasn't held us back. Did, did you have a, like a, a third year show then for for everyone on your calls? You mean all five of us? Well, was there just the just the five? I well, yeah. So, did you yeah. do it from home on Zoom? <laughs> well, there was meant to be this day in college where like we kind of put it on the you know big screen. It was like look at all the projects that we did. But I think one person did show up, so it's like four of us. So we watched them anyway, but everyone had already seen them. So right. yeah, yeah, it was yeah. just kind of like we went in for nothing, but it was good. <laughs> Is that the sort of thing where there's meant to be a lot of empl potential employers milling around to try and scoop up the young talent? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. In this case, it was you and three mates from each other films you'd already seen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah, no, it's interesting because my external assessor um, who came to the show as well was like the, the lead guy at the time at um, ITV in Leeds. So he saw my work and then I got offered a job so um, I was very lucky in that respect I didn't come out with the, the best grades on the course personally but uh, I got I got a good job straight away so it's just just interested to, to hear like kind of what what colleges and universities and education do now to kind of get the students moving on jobs well we so, weren't we weren't really offered anything like off the back of it it was kind of like a pat on the back well done off you go <laughs> yeah that, that well, was it it was literally it and then it was like let us know it, how so. you get on in a few months so, so what did you do next then what was the i was just gonna say during the course of the three years there's never any discussion about here's how you might actually get a job doing this when you're finished well at the start it was like 
oh, you probably want to go to Manchester or London. It was like, if you're staying up here, it's going to be hard. You might get something, but, you know, don't hold out, really. Which was brutal, but it was honest, in a sense. It was kind of like, you know. So, essentially, they'd had us at college in Newcastle, but at, in the first year, we were pretty much told, yeah, yeah, don't be here. So, it was, it was really weird. So, like, a few people in second year, they went down to, like, Brighton and places like that, and, you know, had to kind of mix about. But, yeah, so there wasn't really um, any motivation but, uh, so your friends that were on the course you, that you was with you said they've headed off to different places. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you're you're now employed by your film. What are they doing? Are they employed in the industry, or have they got lucky? Well, or? if I'm right in thinking, the the I think there was two of them went to Brighton. They probably had to do another year because you don't just do one additional year. You've got to do two. So I reckon they probably just finished last year. So I haven't heard or seen anything what they've done so I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign I'm not yeah. sure um, so so yeah so you, f- you finished you had your you had your show with your, your friends uh, pat on the back and you were sent off into the the workforce if mm. you like so, but uh, that didn't quite happen did it you decided to do your own projects yeah I tried to keep myself try to stop myself from going like rusty with it because obviously I feel like if I just stopped doing anything creatively eventually I'd lose any passion or care for it um I didn't own a camera but my mate did and he he was always really interested in it but he was he never really like did any education for it just one of them people that was interested in it more he was more so photography um but yeah so we started doing little projects here and there just basically you know a couple of things for free just to basically try and get more content under my belt because I knew that well more people anyone that I'm rivaling with to get like a job they're probably going to end up having more than me if I don't do anything but like you know in the meantime between leaving and getting a job so yeah I tried to make as many projects as possible made some some good ones tried to keep it quite different doing like nightclub stuff and then obviously did something quite corporate it was the science stuff um but it was yeah it was hard though as well trying to find work very mm-hmm. difficult but Glad I did it though, obviously. So I think one it, of the sorry, Matthew. I was gonna say it was about a year that you were out there trying to get a job before yeah. you interviewed with us. So, roughly, how many interviews did you get? What like what was the let's <coughs> particularly as it relates to the advice that you got, which was basically don't bother. There's no jobs here. Like, what was your experience in that twelve months? <sighs> it was it, to be honest, it was quite hard because obviously what I was trying to do to make any money was just kind of like manual labor sort of jobs that were going just anything that I kind of get my hands on but like the interview that I did with yourselves was the first interview I'd ever done in my whole life really yeah I hadn't had any but I'd applied for so many jobs right. like my indeed like application page was it was a mess it was, was just that, jobs like trying for everything but no luck was that well applications for like what you studied in, yeah, yeah, like in the media and yeah. editing stuff, not just random jobs. No, no stuff, stuff like media related, and then even something like leads. But even then, it was just nothing. And were you getting replies, or were you just getting ignored? A couple ignores, and then a couple like just emails that basically say, "Not this time, but we're going to keep you on record for next time." Mm-hmm. All that sort of stuff, like the typical response you'd expect. So, did anyone ever comment on? either the quantity or the quality of the work that you're presenting no never got any sort of like feedback as to why Mm -hmm. unless i think there was one where it said that the experience was lacking obviously because i was applying for this job and they were like oh you need a couple years of an actual role experience to go for something like this but obviously i was firing at anything it was was interesting when you came in obviously for the interview (coughs) and 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 sat in that seat yeah and one of the things i said was i'm surprised you haven't got a job Mm-hmm. But listening to what you've described there, I, I wonder if it's because <clears throat> your film being a, a smaller production company, as managers and directors of the company, we know what we're looking for. Whereas if it's bigger companies, they are literally like looking at your experience and not those people are removed really from the management or the production or whatever it is, and they're just there to look at the CVs that come through do a checklist has he got this many years of experience no right they're off the table as opposed to kind of really looking at the 
the quality of the work that's been well yeah i mean uh, based on what you've described there who's to say that anyone ever looked at anything that you presented in terms of work well I, I there's know. no evidence of it is there because well, there's no comments or feedback well yeah they probably just looked at <coughs> job roles and seen that i'd done obviously nothing because all i'd done is like freelance projects and stuff like that but in terms of an actual job role there wasn't anything apart from when i was like a waiter a few years ago so. <laughs> i mean i will say when you when you came in there were a, num a number of strong candidates it was it was good to see not not all exactly with the skill set you had because you had the editing the filming experience which is what we was specifically looking for um but there were a, a, a number of strong candidates at the same time um but for us it was it was the quality of the work that you'd done it it was what you'd done after education as well like you say putting yourself out there to try and get additional work. I think you worked at a hotel for for a little bit, but you'd made them a, a video as well yeah, while you a, was there. So did them a video for for free, obviously, yeah. just like as a basically, I was like asking them for for a favor, like you know, like I would like to make you a video, just you know, and they were like, yeah, yeah, which was great. I mean, for that to, I mean, production quality of that and the certain. Um, documentary that you did as well like really good like production quality um, so for us seeing that and I mean that's what we was looking for like you had obviously you'd, you'd finished your education and you had that but for us to actually be able to click through to a showreel or an example of a documentary or just a little corporate video like the, the science one was was brilliant um, and, I, and I think really that's what got you in to the that's what while well, we interviewed you uh, for the position um, because some, some of the applications just didn't even have a link to to show the fundamentals of what we needed well yeah like, like we said to you at the time <clears throat> we're looking for a combination of obviously some experience but we're particularly for the role that we're advertising we're aware that you're not going to have necessarily much experience if any in industry but obviously you've got education experience but the quality of work's one thing, and then just having the right attitudes, the other. The fact that you'd gone out and found your own projects to do, like you're saying, that it doesn't matter where you're getting paid for or not, the fact that you, had, that you had the initiative to do it, that you had the understanding that if you didn't keep trying to do new things, you get a bit stale. Listen to what you're saying there, the fact that you actually <clears throat> had a bit of a strategy in the projects that you picked, because you did come in and show a variety of different things. That was the like plan. If, if you'd come in with, if you'd come with one really good video, that might not have... We might not have ruled you out on that, but the fact that you came in and said, "Well, he has like three or four different ones," that that showed clear progression as well. Like, you know, that that was that was the important thing. I think that's what I tried to do with all my projects. Is like I tried to make sure that because you're kind of only as good as your last project, aren't you? Really. So I kind of tried to keep that attitude with everything that I did. It was like, okay, so if I do another one, I've got to try and do something different to make it stand out, make it better. So I tried to make sure that everything I did was like long progression of like mm -hmm. quality going up mm -hmm. and <clears throat> shortly after we um we employed you he was asked by was it your lecturer to go back and give a talk to mm -hmm. students that were there i know you'd only been working with us for a short time uh, about of education for obviously a bit longer than that what did after getting the job with us and then going back to talk to the students what did what did you tell them? Was it about the course? Was it about how to well, he pulled get up a job? The, he pulled up in the company Ferrari. <coughs> yeah. And as he walked yeah. down the corridor, he was handing, flying up the 50s. He's like, well, I made it. I made Look it now, guys. Yeah, I'm it. here to tell you all how to, how to do it. It was, about, tomorrow. was it about a week after you joined us? You, you seemed really eager to go and do the talk. Um, it seemed like you had something to say to them. No, I, I think it was a, a few weeks. I think it might have been like October. Was it? So it might have been, ooh, ooh, been that like long, a, wasn't it? Like a month. <laughs> like a month. Yeah, but you did seem like, you seemed quite excited a lot of people would feel nervous about that or a bit apprehensive you seemed like you had something to say to them i don't know i felt like i'd i'd, I'd seen <laughs> you know i'd i've seen the truth <laughs> so no yeah i was i was excited to go because i think that like when i was there no one really came in and never spoke to us and i still have like you know a good i still speak to my tutor every now and again you know he's always asking how i'm doing because he was actually really happy that i got a job because he felt that I, I deserved it because I must have worked uh, quite hard. So he thought that I was, in, you know, entitled to go out there and get a job. So he's, he was happy to bring us back. Um, 
And I basically told them that like, the, the piece of paper that you get that says you've got this grade is irrelevant. Like if you're trying to, like don't just do the most basic piece of content you can do to make sure that you get a first. So in the last year, a few people were like, oh, I'm gonna do something easy to make sure that I can just basically get the first because the first looks good. And obviously with COVID, I thought that that was a really bad attitude to have. And I thought, well, I'm gonna do something that's really risky and might not work, which is like going to London and film a documentary with a group of people that I don't know about a religion that I'm not really aware of and basically push the boat out as far as I can because I thought I'd rather fail and prove that I've tried to do something that's like really experimental and quite like interesting instead of just like going for the bare minimum, just to scrape by, I don't know, I just think, just wasn't having it. So I think that I said that to them, I was like, try and do something that's like exciting, try and do something that like as well um, improves your your skill set. So like I tried to do something, so I had someone from the course come down and help me in London and help us with like the whole pre-production process and everything mm -hmm. to kind of like, you know, have like something that he could also use on, on his showreel. Um, but yeah, I basically told them to just like try and do something that is out of your comfort zone and something that you can really look at as a final piece and go, that's really good and also as well once you've spent all the money to go to college because obviously it's not cheap mm -hmm. or to study a degree it's worth having something that's like an actual you know not just a piece of paper some actual content that shows this is what I did and that's why it was worth it yeah. and I think that I try to tell them as well like use the people in in the group as much as you can so like if everybody chips in so like there was five of us and obviously with it being a small group it was kind of like okay if we can chip in with each other's work and make it a bit easier here and there. And like, so if someone's good at editing, get them in to help with the editing. If someone prefers to do mm -hmm. camera work, get them in for camera. If someone thinks that they can help with the pre production, you know what I mean? Like try and basically have everybody put forward what they kind of want to do career wise, and then try and put it in different projects to try and help everyone get along. Yeah. And I was basically saying to them, like, don't think that you're just an individual in the class that's just like on a one man mission. Cause obviously you just can all band together mm -hmm. and create nice things pretty much yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. it's good advice it's good advice. definitely so um <clears throat> as we said a few months ago we sat here doing the interview mm -hmm. you know three but month three and a few a bit months into the career um <clears throat> tell us how it's been particularly how it's been in comparison to what you thought it might be or what we sold it as um i think that like if I was to go from the perspective of when I was in college and obviously we were told like, oh, these are the type of jobs you can get. I think that no one, like, I don't think you ever really, you never really end up getting something that you you think it's gonna be because obviously you don't know. So I think that I thought it was gonna be like completely different based off um, what I was taught at college. Uh, and I think that that's just obviously normal because you've got only a certain amount of stuff you can fit into like one day a week. So I think that it's always gonna be eye-opening but I think it's been like good eye-opening because I think there's so many things that like I just didn't even understand like I, I don't know even like the little things that you probably think that I wouldn't be interested in like the, the clear cast stuff I, I find it fascinating all that sort of yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just find it really interesting I, apparently I, there's one no seriously like, over. <laughs> well, no, because I didn't even know that was like a thing yeah I'm, I'm gonna put a meeting in your diary for Monday morning we'll have a chat yeah. <laughs> But no, I just think it's it's really interesting seeing like the different types of things that, that go on and like the little things that people would never would never see. Mm -hmm. And also there's been so much to learn with like different software. I mean at college I didn't even touch After Effects, never even in things like Illustrator, I have no idea. So it's been like really eye opening and really good to like get on hands on with different projects which touch on all those different types of software and it's been like just a bit it's been like really good. I think that I've found that I've learned a lot and I think that obviously considering I'm three months in and I thought, I probably thought when I first started, oh yeah, within three months, I'll like understand what's going on. <laughs> nah, I still just obviously free, <laughs> freestyling. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna keep learning. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna keep developing. It's gonna keep changing. As yeah. long as you're doing what you're doing now, being interested about it. Well, I think you have to like enjoy the learning thing as well. Cause I think obviously, I mean, I've been in education like I didn't take well apart from the forced one last year I've never taken like a gap year between sixth form and college between secondary school and and sixth form like so I've been in education my whole life so I still for some reason feel like I'm meant to be in a classroom like I don't know learning <laughs> which is really weird um so I still feel like I'm trying to take any little bits of information I can and try and learn yeah, yeah definitely I mean I was in employment probably 
two years after I graduated from university, um, a year at ITV and then a year in a multimedia company, and then I, I went freelance. And I often kind of think back and think, like, uh, if I'd stayed working with a group of people, I would have learned, obviously things would have been different, but I would have learned so much more, so much faster, like, what new things might, what might I be doing if I'd stayed on, you know, in the company, you know, would I have been out filming sooner, would I have been doing better animation, would I have been doing, the, you know, just the pool of knowledge, because the internet was, in its infancy back then, there was, you know, people trying to log on. Uh, you had to pull up a phone like that and drop it onto a modem, didn't you? And then <laughs> you did. Yeah. dial it. <clears throat> War games, basically. <laughs> so, yeah, and so I think that's a really good attitude for, like, you know, there's always going to be people that can go out there and, and do lots of things. Um, I think probably nowadays it is set up so you would, like a sponge, gather all that information with, you know, social media and the internet and all that kind of thing. So I think nowadays it is probably easier to work in isolation and learn than with a team. But I think working with a team is going to be just so much information on tap, like literally knowledge, skills and everything. I mean, how, how many times a day, and I'm going to say you in this instance, but it's applicable to almost everyone in the office, do you turn around and say to someone else, oh, can you show us how to do this? Or you got an idea about that? Like, you know, you, it, it's much harder to do that, working in isolation, even with all the technology and stuff, isn't it? Like the ability to just literally turn to someone next to you and say, oh, what do you think of this? Mm -hmm. Invaluable, isn't it? Yeah. No, definitely. I think I'll probably do that, like, <clears throat> more times than I think a day. But I think that what I try and do is get, like, if I'm shown something by the Tom or Gav, they'll show us it, and then I'll probably try and like look deeper as to how they've done it, mm -hmm. or like what Gav will do is do it and then like delete it and basically say now, now do it, and then obviously if I've been listening, I'll be able to go in <laughs> and do it, which yeah, is probably the best way of doing it, really. So coming back to kind of what you've worked on in the past kind of three months I think I'd be quite jealous um, if I was straight out of education working and doing what you've done now because you've worked on a TV commercial straight away well not just one but, but two um, and you've recently worked on like an awards series of awards videos mm -hmm. and uh, the client has actually come in and thanked the team but obviously thanked Thank you, which is a rare occasion for that to happen. Like actually physically come into the office. And just just this afternoon, I, oh, alert, okay. I alerted her to the fact that there was a <clears throat> LinkedIn post about it with a clip on it. And within a few minutes of me sending the email, she put a, quote, a comment on saying, great work, Callum. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, oh. it is nice. It's very nice. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think we got something through the post as well, didn't we, from another project that the team had worked on. Yeah, very, very nice. Part of. Thank you, Card, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I have worked on quite a variety of things already. Yeah. Was it, were you expecting that? Do you think you'd be more like kind of, I'm on this for two weeks, that's all I'm doing kind of thing? Because obviously it's not like that, like we told you. Yeah. I, I, at first I think I kind of thought that would be like a bit same here and there, obviously, if there's certain stuff that are just kind of like a constant content that gets put out to clients mm -hmm. but I think that like like you say I think I did um was AR Kitchens not actually before I even started the filming was uh on the a few days before you started yeah I forget what day it was but yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. I think that the like the range of stuff that I've done um or been a part of is like I found that really entertaining because mm -hmm. like it feels like it's always different and then when you see something in the calendar it's like one fall beyond that it's quite cool and yeah. like you don't even though you haven't really been told much about it yet you just see like a little thing and you're like oh cool Something's happening. Yeah. yeah, it's good to hear. It is good. Yeah, yeah it is, isn't it? Full of full of positivity, this lad. Always. Good positive attitude. You see, he is. We yeah. interview him after three years. <laughs> we'll see if we've managed to hammer it out of him. Right? Oh, don't worry about that. I'm sure <laughs> I'll deal with that. <laughs> well, I mean, I wasn't going to say anything, but when well, I said I, we, I, when yeah, I said we, I know. Yeah. I, that's why I said it because I knew that's what you meant, Mister Positivity <laughs> over here, Mac Two, Mister Realistic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, so I'm going to wrap this up then. Are we? 
Well, I'll, I'll, I'll assume on your behalf that you're really looking forward to the next year now. <laughs> of course. Of course, yeah. So positive. Now, now the, the truth of it is, <laughs> the truth of it is, as we talked about bef- before we turn the cameras and the mics on, you are a naturally positive person. You've, you sat here because you demonstrated that you had, you know, a bit of get up and go about you and obviously some creative talent. All I've seen in the last few months is that, you know, is evidence of that, basically. And um, the fact that you're across quite a lot of different projects and getting stuck into things that you literally couldn't have done before you joined us. Um, that's ideal result for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. As you know, we're, we're always trying, as we've got a track record of taking people on in the kind of position you, you were in, giving them quite often their first job in industry. So... Um, to, to tie it right back to the start then, and it's going to be, I think, a pretty simple answer for you. Do you think you need a formal qualification? Like, wh- where do you land on that one? Do you need, or, well, certainly the answer is you don't need to go to university because you went to college, but do you think you actually need a qualification? Mm, it depends what you have access to and whether that's financially, or like, obviously I live quite out in the sticks. So in terms of, like, access to stuff, it can be difficult. But I think that, for me, I think it was worth it in a sense because without the without college and without the projects that came through that you know i wouldn't have had any sort of um showreel and i think that i wouldn't have had the people on the course to bounce the ideas off to kind of get more ideas you know what i mean because i think that the constructive criticism of that of like a group of people that are doing the same thing as you in the same like you know in the same course is, is really important because they can have an input of what they think should be changed so you can kind of get a, a good sense of what people will think about it when it when it goes out especially if the people on your course are like the same target audience that you will be putting something out to so i think that for me i would say that it was worth it but i don't think that i think if you have access to equipment and all that sort of stuff and you've got the right ideas and obviously the right attitude mm-hmm. i do think that you can probably just get on yourself yeah, yeah. without obviously throwing education under the bus but oh, that's fine. yeah well clearly education has its place but um i think on that on that point surely tutors and course leaders need to have a better understanding of the opportunities because we're one of dozens of production companies in the newcastle and gated area alone there's plenty of opportunity out there well, that's the thing. I feel like when you get into it at first, you're very shoehorned out of like Newcastle. Like, like I said, like at first it was like, ah, oh, go to Manchester, go to London, or do two years of foundation degree in Newcastle, do your top up year in Manchester, do it in London, or go and study abroad. We had a, uh, a lass that was on um, our course, and she'd studied in Holland, UK. Um, She'd studied in, I think she studied in Milan last year. She's been all over the place. But like, and she's worked on a lot of stuff, but it's like, you know, the, the wallet must be getting quite <laughs> yeah. drained. Like, That's an expensive education, that, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think obviously it comes down to what you what you want to do and where you, you want to be. So like, obviously when I went to, um, when I went to London to do, the work experience for a post-production house that was obviously completely different that was like not something that's not how i thought it would be um based off just what i've been taught mm-hmm. at college just mm-hmm. didn't think that you know but i mean i probably wouldn't have felt like i could go and do work experience there without being at college because obviously you know i tried to i don't know within three years have a a skill set that i can go okay I'm, at least i'm in a valid position to go and do work experience and have some idea of what I'm doing. Whereas if I hadn't done that, I probably would have thought I can't go for work experience because I've got no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, 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 that's fair. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Well, I've enjoyed listening to you, Callum. Exactly. Well, Thank you. Congratulations on a first con- <laughs> successful first three months, and uh, I'm sure the next year will be even better. Lovely. Thanks. Wrap it up then. <laughs> After you, sir. That's the end of the podcast. That's Thanks it. for watching. <laughs> like, subscribe, etc. Like, subscribe, <laughs> etc. <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell. Where's the positivity? That's, that's, that that's is positive. That is positive. I could have closed it. Links. Link go for it. We're still rolling. Go on, go on then, Cal. You, you do it. You do it to yeah. camera. Because don't worry, you'll be editing this anyway. Yeah, I will. I will. Yeah, uh, if you want, Cal. I'll take it from you. This is the longest outro ever. It is, it is. 
Thank you very much for watching the Your Film Podcast. If you have enjoyed, like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. We're on Apple Music, Spotify, <laughs> and whatever else you can find us on. YouTube.